let's see, what did I watch this past week? I finished Battle Athletes Victory, and it was pretty pleasing. Or at least I, I was very pleased by it. That's a better way to put it. I don't really know how much I want to talk about it, you know, because I could easily spoil stuff, but basically, um, you know, it, it, it didn't turn out to be like the most spectacular sports anime ever, but I thought it kind of progressed kind of neatly and nicely, and it's, it, it came to an, a neat conclusion, I guess. Kind of reminds me a bit of Angelic Lair, although, um, huh. I guess there's trade-offs between the two, although I think I liked Angelic Lair more. Anyways, um, I then followed that up by watching all of Pokemon Season 2, like I mentioned I would in celebration of Pokemon DVD 47. The theory now being that once 44 comes in and I have all of Season 3, I can celebrate by watching all of Season 3. Anyway, uh, Season 2, you know, it, it's actually... I'd like to say it's about what you'd expect. But let's see. First of all, I was actually pretty pleased with it. Um, you know, a lot of the episodes are actually what you would expect from Pokemon. Silliness, Team Rocket coming out of nowhere. I kind of realized that Team Rocket's kind of like an inverse Bugs Bunny. I mean... They have these ridiculous things, you know, but they can put on disguises, and they're the bad guys, and the good guys can't recognize them at all. Whereas Bugs Bunny would always dress up, and then Elmer Fudd couldn't recognize him. Kind of an interesting um, switch there, I thought. Anyway, there were definitely a couple of episodes in there that were pretty cool. Which is why, overall, you know, you kind of expect certain things of Pokemon, so those moments when it's pretty cool are, well, pretty cool. And, uh, I think people call it badass mode or something, where Ash would be, like, the weakest, stupidest idiot around, but then, out of nowhere, he pulls out the ability to pick up a tree trunk or something. None of that tree trunk stuff happened in, um, Season 2. It was a different kind of badass, where he just said the right things and did the right things, etc. Um, the tree trunk thing is really a reference to the picture. I, I, I know, confusing, confusing, and I'm babbling. Um, the other thing I watched was um, Our Home's Deity Fox, which I showed you just arrived today. Um, I thought it was actually pretty amusing. Not not super exciting to watch, unlike something like, like a Torador, I guess, where you just leave that feeling exhilarated. Or rather, I left that feeling exhilarated, and I still haven't watched the second part. Damn it. <sighs> so much to watch. Anyways, um... Uh, it didn't feel like there was anything about it that was particularly strong, other than many of the characters are just amusing. And it's also kind of neat when they're talking about yokai to see another take on how yokai work or whatever. So, that was interesting. Um, I've been asked to talk about Bacano. Now, I can't remember exactly what happened. It does not help that the way Bacano was released and as in, like, individual DVDs, like, a couple months apart, probably. And, uh, the way the story is structured, it, it's a really confusing story, because basically it tells different parts of it from different people's point of view at different points in time. It jumps around a lot. So, it's really hard to put together everything that's happening and follow everything that's going on. But, in a nutshell, I was left with a pretty favorable impression for it. I think two reasons. I mean, I... I, oh, I guess I can't reference that video because then I'd have to dig it up. Okay. So, um, two things. I know the overall story... It was, it was very interesting seeing everything get pieced together and having a vague understanding of everything that was going on. Probably a more clear story than something like Serial Experiments Lane where you have to watch the anime like three or four times to vaguely understand the story of that. And then you think about it and you're confused again. Anyways, um, Bacano had that neat little story it told about a simple event and a lot of cool stuff that happened around it that you've probably seen um, hints of in trailers. And all that stuff was neat. And stuff I the thing that really brought it over the edge in terms of neat to I actually enjoyed this was probably the crazy couple that came from California. I don't know. They're like the characters that make an anime, I guess. At least for me. Sort of like how Azumanga Daioh for me was all about Miss Osaka. 
or something. Oh well. Oof. It looks like next week's releases are kind of strange pickings. It's not super huge. But some of this stuff I need to jump on top of right away. One that's most noteworthy is the Melancholy Hari Chan Suzumiya and Yoran Churia san Volume 2. And uh, as usual, you know, DVD Aficionado doesn't have a link to Amazon, so if I'm going to order that before it comes out, hopefully so that it comes here when everything else comes out, I think I need to do that from um, Bondi's site. So I should really get on top of that and maybe shop around a bit to see if I can add a little to it. But I might not be able to do much to make next week's um, update particularly big and impressive simply because um, I, I, I took care of my Christmas shopping this week, which is also why I haven't been responding to anybody. Um, but at the same time, that also means there's not a whole lot left in my bank account. So it's pretty much just food and anime, food and anime. That's, which is actually a pretty good combination. Anyway, um, so I have to look into next week's stuff like right now. So I'll get on top of that and see you all next week.